All right, let's uh, let's see what Mike is doing with his uh, radio. Looks like he's uh, cutting up the shims, the real tiny shims. Yeah, these are the brass the shims. Brass shims. I didn't measure them. I don't know how thick they are, but you know, it looks like one or two thousandths, maybe. It's pretty thin. So got one uh, one made up there. Just just using the the actual the big aluminum shim as a template there. So that's one down. That should work. Yeah, hopefully that uh, takes up the necess you know, the, the necessary play. Might need to make two more, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. So there's one one little pair done. Alright. And uh gotta make the second one now. Go ahead and we'll uh, we'll check up on you when you finish that one. Alright. All right, buddy. Didn't see you there. Nah, the tubes is over. They just want to watch you. All right. Grab the jukebox there, buddy. Well, uh, we don't want the YouTube Nazis after us. Need a little bit of narration for you, then. All right, go ahead, buddy. Um, the first two shims, brass shims, were not enough. Uh, with the, with the. Uh, Connecting rod uh, bolts cranked down. There was a uh, quite a bit of binding. It did turn on the shaft, but it was binding. So I'm gonna add uh, two more and see how that feels. It's gonna probably it's probably gonna be loose at that point. But then I can file that aluminum, those main aluminum shims, to actually take the uh, take the final, you know, a little bit out of it. Get it, get it fitted just right. So. You think you guys loosen up a bit once uh, you get that engine pounding away? It may, but then again, I can always file it a little bit more once we get some runtime into it and it breaks in. Mm -hmm. So it can take care of the fine adjustment after a while. Once we get, you know, once we get a season or show season worth of runtime on it, uh, or who knows, it might break in very easily. Yeah, right. So we'll see. Everything's, right. everything's got to bed in a little bit. So. All right, buddy, keep going. All right. Go on there, buddy, a little too tight. Too loose. Too loose. Yeah. So That's what with, I said. With two, okay, all right. So the two brass shims and and uh, one aluminum shim make it just a hair too loose. So I'm just taking a, a, a little bit off of each aluminum shim to make up for that, to snug it up on the uh, bearing. And, uh, yeah. Well, it doesn't take it. much, huh? Well, I'll test fit it again, and... Uh, I guess you'd be surprised. It's only taking off dust, remember? So, mm -hmm. uh, gotta do a little bit on each each side. Then try it again. All right, keep going, buddy. All right. Uh, how are you making out of here, buddy? Okay, I'm just looking at the old Briggs uh, rod and piston. Get a little couple ideas for the uh, rods that we're gonna have to make. We're gonna reuse the pistons um, and the wrist pins, but the rods are gonna be built from scratch. All right. So, how'd you make out with a crank? Oh, pretty well. Pretty pleased with it, really. Um, Spins nice. There's a little drop of oil in there, just to help it out a little bit, but it doesn't bind anywhere, and uh, has, you know, virtually no end play to speak of. You can feel something, but well, you gotta have something. Yeah, it gotta be something. And as far as like bearing lash or bearing clearance, again, I we should put some plastic gauge in here and really check it out. I mean, I could I could file it each aluminum shim a little bit more and snug it up to the point where we want it to break in and then it'll seat itself but uh, that's that's really nice for right now that's good enough to mock the rest of the engine up and get it set up right and yeah. then we can worry about that later you can move on yep I had a lot of questions about oil in that thing there and I don't have time to write these guys uh, essays and stuff so uh, give me an idea how you're going to oil that crank alright well the, the master rod the main rod is going to be permanently fixed uh, right here in between the two uh, uh, bolts that hold the, uh, the the rod together the rod hub so uh, I was thinking an oil hole, um, uh, something along this line going down this way on this side of the screw. So it would be drilled here with a little uh, funnel shape there running into this side of the uh, bearing and then another one on the opposite side feeding the top shell. And then maybe an oil groove cut on the bottom bearing shell and uh, it should work pretty well. Of course there's going to be uh, three or four nozzles in the crankcase itself, uh, one 
spraying oil on each cylinder and one at the rod hub here. Now there may be there may be three or four depending on um, the volume that we get out of the gear pump that we built. So we'll have to test that when we get closer to it. We could have a nozzle at each upper piston or actually one at the top and you probably won't even need two at the bottom because they'll just get oil splashing down on them. But we're going to have one cylinder directly up so we can have one nozzle up to that uh, cylinder or maybe a Y on that one and then one directly at the rod for lubrication, the master rod hub here. So, okay. yeah. Well, you got a lot done. That's uh, accomplished a lot there. Yeah. That was a lot of work on that. Just that. Uh, yeah, just getting that. Just done. that bearing. So. All right. All right. Enough of that. I'm Mike. Yep. Until next week. All right. See you later. See you.